Yo, 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 yo. Bongs, we are bongs, you know. A bongs, we are bongs, you know. real bongs. Nige bongs, Nige bongs. Bongs, we are bongs, so. Bongs, so follow the redeem and bongs, so. Yeah. Marry you, go on. Big up yourself. You see him? Yeah? yeah, man, big up Wayne, one, the great youth. All right. So, um. We have a very interesting reasoning here in the evening, you see? Very interesting reasoning. Um, this um, is a conversation I think we must have. Yeah, so I hope some people um, will take heed and will listen to what we have to say and um, understand how they um, use the internet. Can you see the internet? The internet is a thing where a lot of people get carried away. The internet is a thing where if you don't know how to use it, you will pay the ultimate price. If you do not know how to use the internet, you will pay the ultimate price. Hi, good girl, what's up? Right? If you don't know how to use the internet, if you do not know how to use the internet, you will pay the ultimate price. And I see... I've seen where so many people on social media um, using this thing called um, internet or web and do not realize that they're actually putting stuff out there that may come back and hurt them. You see? Because whatever you do online, you know, it has been recorded. It's been stored in a data. You see? And trust me, some people that you see on the internet here, them have legal issues, them have legal problems, and they continue to poke the beer. They continue to come on social media, um, go after people, send threat to people, all manner of things. And all it takes is one person to report you. You see? That's all it takes, you know, one person to report you. Remember saying, you know, you may have, you may file for us, you may be filing for asylum, or trying to get asylum, or you may have a green card. A green card will not save you from deportation. You hear that ugly, Dan? A green card. Yeah? cannot save you from deportation if they decide to deport you. So somehow you have a green card and think that, oh, because you have the green card now, you can be on the internet sending threat to people, saying all manner of things. Yeah? All it takes is one person to report you and bring that information to the, 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 the police. And you're going to detention. They may be on the blocks. For deport you. Because that can be terroristic threat. You see what I say? So I've seen where some of them are foreign have green card. Some of them seek asylum. And you're threatening people. You see? It's dangerous. Because green card not exempt you. Now... This is a social media influencer that I actually really like. Ivani. I just, I just like her. My spirit just take her. It's like I was so rooting for her to do good. To make her life, you know, make a turn and, you know, do something with her life. Yeah? I remember when I saw her first came across a video with Ivani. It was something about her getting baptized and she's gonna go to church. And all that, you know, I think she was I think she just I think she get was released from jail or prison. And it was this video of her crying and I think it was she was crying and say, Oh, she turning her life over to God and so forth and so on, you know. 
And then hear that, I heard that she was held in some detention trying to cross the border to come into America. You see? Then I started seeing her on the TikTok. And I saw her got pregnant. Saw her with the baby. And I saw how the people them encourage some of the behaviors that she was putting forward. Some of the behaviors that she was displaying. A lot of people on social media warn you about this all the time. When trouble catch you, them no business with you. But I see a lot of them on social media, they cheer it on. They encourage it. You see? Until trouble take you. So in the case of Ivani, yeah? According to report, it says here, <clears throat> is a following arrest several days ago. Information surfaced online that Ivani Wright was placed at a jail in the state of Georgia. Amid the speculations about her future, her mugshot was released online May, um, April 8th. In the photo, Ivani had on a green colored top with white undershirt. Notable, she gave a stern facial expression in the circulating photo. And this is her. Wright was placed at the Henry County Jail following her arrest, her arrest on the 4th of April, 2024. Her initial bond was set at zero dollars, indicating she was not eligible for release on bail. According to Henry County Jail's website, Ivani received two charges, one for terroristic threats and acts Terroristic threats and acts. And another for criminal damage to property. Second degree damage greater than $500. With a total bond set at $1,050. Arriving in America a year ago, Ivani was briefly detained at an ICE detention center before being released. See? No, this is not the first time Ivani um, has, in my view, gotten herself into this type of situation. Yeah? I remember hearing about Ivani and her troubles. Young, beautiful girl. And it was things like in the media. Ivani went to a store, a restaurant. Borrowed, she and her co, she and her co accused borrowed two persons' phone. I borrowed some people's phone. Yeah? Borrowed, borrowed, Borrowed some phones from people that were at the, the restaurant. Said she gonna she wanna use the phone to take picture. And the people themselves that Vani just left with their phones. In another situation I read again about her. She was selling Instagram pages. According to the report, she was ripping off people or committing fraud. Yeah. Promising people that you're gonna get them some Instagram page and didn't pay them and didn't and didn't give them the page, took their money, according to the reports. Now you wonder to yourself, say 
After all of that, and you get a chance now in America. You don't think that she da and get a child. You don't think that she da it, you know? But it seems like I've on in a, no group yet. Seems like I've on in a ready to learn it. So now she's locked in jail and terroristic threats. Just had a young baby. You see? I'm going to bring on attorney, immigration attorney, um, Michelle Layard. So we can um, figure out what can be done for Ivani, if anything can be done. And how he or anyone else could assist her. Because remember, I'm still with sister. I will tough your sister. You see? So let us bring on the expert. Yeah? To see how, how if any, there's any hope for Ivani. You see? Because at the end of the day, you know, we don't want to write her off. Hail Chief. Hey. Yeah, man. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out to come educate us on this matter. And anyone else is listening, or you can educate them on the do's and the don'ts. Um, so you can just briefly give them a rundown, a synopsis of who you are, and your profession, etc. Sure, sure. So I'm an immigration attorney. Um, I have a Jamaican background. My parents are from Jamaica. Um, I've, but as you can tell from my voice, I'm from the United States. I was born and raised here, but um, I've been representing people from the West Indies um, as well as from other parts of the world for over 10 years now. I'm, I, I might be going on longer than that. I know I've been at least in business with myself for 10 years, but i um, been practicing much longer than that. Um, and just mostly my focus has been on immigration. I do some estate work as well as some property work, but a lot of it's been in immigration. And unfortunately, especially when it's come to certain West Indians I've been representing when, they're, when they've been in prison, um, a good portion of that has been with criminal immigration. So that's sort of just how I've made my living. Is, is the name Michelle um, Laird or how do you pronounce the last name? Sure, sure. it's Mitchell Laird. Okay. Laird. Laird. Yeah, there's not okay. a lot of Lairds in Jamaica. So whenever right, we right, meet right. one, we know it's one of ours. Right, right, right. right. So you have, you have represented, uh, um, um, you know, people from the West Indies in, 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 in um, immigration matters. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I think you're the perfect person that 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 I want to talk to about the situation. So, um, I'm not sure if you um you you you, you um looked into the situation of Ivan, right? I just read. Yeah, yeah. Just now yeah, unfortunately. It. So where do we go from here? So, so, why don't we look at this from the way that a lawyer or rather a judge looks at a case like this, right? So. Um, we can we can start from looking at uh, the first question everybody always asks is how do I get out of prison? So if if you have somebody that's in prison right now with a list of charges against them, um, the th thing I always first look for are how serious are the charges and is there any bail or bond that's being offered? Uh, I believe in this case what we saw uh, from the court records is that there is a bail that's that's been offered. I don't know if it's been satisfied yet, but it looks like it's somewhere around two thousand dollars, about two thousand one hundred. It's, uh, it's uh, I think one thousand and fifty dollars. Yeah, I didn't know if there were two different parts right. to that bail because they That's, said total I, I, bail. I actually is... see one for five hundred as well. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So, but whatever it is, whatever the amount is, then you know that if someone posts bail, they're allowed to get out of out of prison. The problem that we have here is that. Um, most likely immigration has already been notified and immigration will put on you what's called a detainer. So while you're in prison, you're being held by the state of Georgia, right? So in the United States, the states are different than the federal government. 
So the state of Georgia is holding you in their prison. They're paying for your meals. Hopefully they're paying for your medical care and a bed. I'd like to say heat, but I've been in a lot of prisons. There's no heat in there. So you're there, they're holding her um, at the expense of the Georgia taxpayer. When you come with bail, they're more than happy to let you go because they don't want to spend that money anymore. But immigration will put a detainer on you. And now a detainer says, hey, when you're ready to let her go, give us a phone call and then hold on to her for a little bit. We'll come pick her up. Wow. And so they'll hold on to her until immigration gets a chance to swing around and then they'll pick her up and bring her to immigration prison instead. Immigration detention is what we call it. Um, and when we say prison, we're, we're saying jail because she's not in prison, is it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, right. My apologies. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, so, but based on the charges, though, terroristic threats and acts, let's say, let's say um, immigration does not pick her up. Right. What are, the, right. what are we looking at here? Terroristic um, threats and acts. How serious is this? So by its Itself, it may not be that serious. A lot of these charges are what we call misdemeanors. Um, depending on what facts they bring against her, I'm sure everyone already knows the facts because it's all been broadcasted over the internet. But it's up to the prosecutor to decide which things he's allowed to actually bring into court. So depending which acts he actually brings into his charging document, into the document that says all of the things that he believes that she did, um, that'll determine how immigration reacts. So even though it may be a misdemeanor in state court, depending on how it's put into, into the actual courthouse and how it's handled by the judge, immigration may react completely differently. And they may determine that, in fact, she is um, what we would call, say, an aggravated felon. They could determine that she is... Um, uh, uh, has committed a crime involving moral turpitude. And I, I really think that those are the two biggest concerns that someone in her position would have is, um, is it one of these elevated offenses? One is called aggravated felons. The other one is called crime involving moral turpitude. And if you fall into either category, then you could be looking at almost a guaranteed deportation. Right. If you don't right. fall into either category, then you're looking at a deportation, but there's a lot of ways still available to save you before you get deported. Would, would, um, would, our, would our legal issues in Jamaica play, um, play a role in, 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 in that decision? Yeah, absolutely. When we're talking about aggravated felonies, not so much. When we're talking about crimes involving moral turpitude, if, and please forgive me for all the legal phrases. Right. If they don't make sense, they don't make sense to most judges either. They, everyone's been figuring this stuff out as they go along. But when it comes to uh, crimes involving moral turpitude, same thing, um, it, except that it, it does a little bit. They are allowed to take into account what activities you did overseas, as long as those activities have led to a conviction. You know, in, in some instances, it may not even need a conviction. If it just involves drug use, for instance, they're allowed to take that into account. But even if you ignore all of that, when you're dealing with human beings, a judge is a human being, right? We look up to them, but they're a human being. The prosecutor is a human being. When they've seen what you've done, they're going to treat you differently, right? They're, they're going to do their best to be as neutral as possible when they're making their decision. But if you did something that's really offensive to them, it's going to affect the way that they make their decision. So if you did something that was offensive in your home country, a lot of them have what's called discretion, and that's the legal ability to look at your case and just say, I don't really like what you did. I don't like you as a person. I don't think you'd be a good fit for the United States. There's limitations to that, but I've seen it happen a lot of times where people just didn't have a good past, and it affected them after they came to the United States. Um, the, the fact that she has a young child, yeah? How, how, would, you, how would you pursue this matter if you were... I'm her lawyer, if you can speak on that. Yeah, so whenever you have someone with a kid, it's, it's always difficult for everybody because you don't want the child to be harmed by whatever the parent did. It's not the kid's fault. Um, and a child, no matter what the personality of the parent, is always going to be looking towards their mother to be around. In, in that situation, 
Um, I personally would always emphasize the fact that she has a young baby, a young baby that shouldn't be pulled from her because there's a lot of benefits that children may get, whether from nursing or just from um, being close towards their parent within those first few months, uh, even the early years of life. Um, th that could gain us some sympathy to at least delay uh, what's coming if we don't have any actual form of relief available. Relief just means a means of staying in the country when they're trying to kick you out. Um, but I know what hurts against it is that if you have another parent available who is considered responsible, um, who has status in the United States, whether it be a green card or citizenship, then that only makes, you know, it, it makes the balance a little bit more difficult. And I've had that a number of times where someone told me, well, the father's here. And that's, you know, typically it's the prosecutor, what we call the trial attorney. They're always going to say, well, the father's here. The father's fully available. And it looks like the father has custody. And especially if the father has custody, that's, that makes it even more difficult to try and make an argument to the judge that, hey, she deserves a little bit of mercy because this baby at least needs her for now to, to be weaned um, off of her. Well, what if, what if her, her, her um, child's father dropped the charges? Can he pull these charges since they were... Um... I think they were recorded on, on, on the internet. Yeah, that's, so that's one of the fictions, I'm going to call it, that comes from watching TV a lot. Uh, whenever we see it, is they always say, oh, do you want to press charges? What, what really happens in, in real life is they may ask you, do you want to press charges? And what they mean by that is if you're not too offended and the cops don't think it's that serious, they may let the whole thing go. It saves them paperwork. It saves you being prosecuted. And, you know, it makes everybody happy if we're all willing to go our separate ways and not do whatever we did wrong again. But it doesn't actually happen if the prosecutor or the police officer just decides that they didn't like what you did. So by that, I mean, if you walk up to an old lady on the street and, and say you, you punch her in the face, if she says, no, I won't press charges, the cop's probably still going to arrest you because he's saying, I, I don't care. That, that really offended me. And that's because the legal standard isn't, does the person press charges? It has nothing to do with the victim. The way the law is written is that it says you committed a crime against the government. You committed a crime against the state. Um, if, if you're in England, they say that you committed a crime against the crown. Because in reality is that the law was created to protect order for the state, for the government, for the crown, whoever it is. It wasn't made to protect the victim, believe it or not, which sounds horrible, but that's how the Supreme Court has even put it before. Um, and so it's not really up to him to pull these charges back. Well, the only person who really has that power is going to be the prosecutor. It's going to be the DA's office. Well, um, the police officers have a little bit of influence, but even after they make the arrest, it's out of their hands, too. Wow. Wow. Um, quick question. What if someone that um, got their green card through um, the asylum program, yeah, sends yeah. threat to um, um, a U.S. citizen or, or a U.S. resident or anyone, I guess, that can press charges? How... How can it negatively impact that person? Yeah, so first, obviously, like as, you said already, but as, it doesn't matter. Green, even if the person has a green card. In, in, this, yeah. Case, yeah. in this case, uh, like one, another social media influencer, our name is Pretty Don. How, yeah. would she, how, would, how would this impact her if she, if, this, if, if she should send threat to someone, even if she... Um, gets the, 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 um, the privilege to, to a green card or, or, or so forth through the asylum program. Right. So um, obviously, just, just so everyone's clear, it doesn't matter who the victim is. It could be a citizen green card holder. It could even be someone who is in the U.S. without any papers at all. What they care about is the crime, not the actual, um, sorry, not the actual uh, uh, sorry, victim who's who's been involved inside the crime. My apologies. Am I still connected? Because I'm having some technical issues we on can, my side. I can hear you. I think everyone can hear you. We're just not seeing you, but uh, we can hear you clearly. Oh, okay. All right. I thought that was just me. So right. I'll, I'll have to figure that out because I can't see you anymore either, but it's all right. As right. long as everyone's okay right. with my voice, right. then I'll keep going. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, so 
what happens what happens if if it's actually been a crime that's been committed while well, specifically if you're doing it through asylum um they have slightly different standards after you get a green card through asylum than you did if you just simply had a green card um we don't have to go through all of it right now but just the basic idea that people have to worry about is if it's a threat if it's considered um, a terroristic threat which each state defines differently so don't get caught up on the wording but if it's a serious threat that's been made against somebody um yeah then yeah it can be brought against you for charge with charges if it is brought to you with charges then they are allowed to try and bring you to court to take away your green card there are a number of ways that you can protect yourself and save yourself if that does happen but you never want to put yourself in that situation um the the reason why it makes it hard to interpret is because there are 50 states in America there's also Puerto Rico you know what i mean there's Guam etc and each one of these places have their own laws on committing threats over the internet and each one of these laws have different levels of how strict they are and immigration has to translate all of them differently and so uh, obviously immigration doesn't have the time to go through thousands and thousands of laws for each state so they do it on a case by case basis so we've had over maybe 40 50 years of these laws being on the books and we don't we can't say for certain what is a serious enough crime to have you kicked out depending on what what you've been arrested for um some of them obviously we know for certain but others we don't actually know so when you're throwing out threats there's some there's some gray area there all of all threat all crimes involving threats are strong enough if they want to to try and throw you into court but um in some states they may even be stricter than that and could lead you to a, a more serious offense um on the immigration portion of everything i have another friend um another brethren i think he's he has some legal issues as well his name is futai he has some mm -hmm. legal issues um I think he, he married to someone and the person um, abandoned him while he was out the country. And um, he was held by ICE. I'm not sure if you, if, if you got a chance to look at um, that case or that situation. What's yeah, in, in yeah, the yeah. So, so um, yeah, I heard about it. He's, he's a, a strong advocate against certain immorality. How, how, how far can he push the envelope to jeopardize his chance of, of, of staying in, in, in the US? So, without putting people into a box, but essentially when you come back into the United States and you say your marriage case or whatever case you had going fell through, you, can, you are allowed to start uh, another case if you want to. You are allowed to start another marriage case if you have a, if you have a true marriage. You are allowed to um, work on a divorce case, depending on what stage you're at. You are allowed, if you were abused in your initial relationship, you're allowed to do what a lot of people call abandonment or abuse. Um, we call it VAWA. So it, you're, all those are options available for you. But the same problem as we had before with Ivani is that if you're still dealing with human beings and your application, no matter what, even if you don't have crimes against you, your application to get a green card is based off of you being a good enough person to get it. And that doesn't mean, oh, I haven't committed felonies or, oh, I've never punched an old lady because many of those people have gotten green cards. That's not what they mean. They mean that in my discretion, when I'm done talking to you, when I'm done looking at all the things that you've done, all the things that you've said, I think you're, you'd be a good next door neighbor to have, right? And many people have committed some pretty serious crimes when I bring them into that interview room and the officer meets them, he says, you know what, this is actually a good dude. This guy has been taking all the wrong paths in life, but I see he's changed. He's actually a really good gentleman. He's a wonderful father. I've, I can't tell you how many, how many Jamaicans I've gotten off. A, one, a bunch I've gotten out of prison for some serious crimes just because they're phenomenal fathers. Like they are just really, really good dads, able to raise their kids, able to, you know, they're at school every day. They're chatting with the teachers even while they're in prison, keeping up on the schoolwork. That just impresses people in the United States. And they're willing to forgive a lot if you show that you're a good enough person. 
But if you're putting stuff online and it's your worst side or it's your aggressive side, then that type of stuff can come back to bite you. Because now someone is judging you as their next door neighbor based off of that before you even come in to say a single word to them. And that's who they see you as a person. And that's, that's where it gets dangerous. Because a lot of the things you do online are to get attention. It's to get likes, it's to get clicks. Sometimes you're just feeling angry, so you want to vent. And so as a result, people aren't seeing the best side of you at all times. They might be seeing the worst side of you, <clears throat> but that's your most popular video. So that's all anyone's going to think of you when they go in, and, uh, and look you up later on. And immigration does look at your social media. Immigration looks at social media when you come in the country. We've known tons of people who've been sent back because they were messaging on Facebook how they were going to work for each other. Um, immigration looks for you, looks at your social media when you apply for a green card, when you apply for citizenship. They just want to see what, what are you presenting to the rest of the world. I know you're going to present someone good to me, but what are you presenting to, to real people out there? So, so if, you had, if, if you had to say, if you had a message for like, I, I just pointed out know, two persons, um, um, pretty down and like foot high. How, what would you say to them if they were your clients trying to get um, their legal stay or have gotten their legal stay? What, what, what had, advice would you give them when it comes on to social media? Because th this is, um, I'm piggybacking off what happened to Ivan based on terroristic threat. Yeah? Yeah. Or, or just moral turpitude, yeah? Um, what yeah. would you say to them if you were representing them um, to get their legal stay in, in the U.S.? M more so like Putai because he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great brother. So what would you like, adv what advice would you give him? So I'd, I'd have to level with everybody, right? Is that I know your internet presence is, is, how, you, is how you make your bread. I know that's how you, how you present yourself to the world, how you promote yourself, and that's very important. But at a certain point, you got to start cleaning up what you put on the, on the internet. Um, and I'm not familiar with everything he's put out, so he may, I'm sure he's got loads of good. It's unfortunately is the stuff that gets that gets shared the most and the things that get shared with me the most are obviously going to be the the ones with the strongest and most controversial opinions that's just how it is and so for the time being until we get to clean up your status the best thing to do is to not put out as many of those videos as you can to pull back from any of the controversial stuff um, that can be hard for people who built their whole personality on that or people who, you know, that's just who they are. They like to get into controversial topics, but, um, it's just, it's, it can get, it can get very dangerous when those are your most popular videos. That's what, cause when, when immigration Googles your name, that's going to be the first thing that pops up. They don't even have to look. It's not going to be the good video where you're doing a good deed or where you're singing an awesome song, or where you're doing a dance routine with a bunch of kids, it's going to be the video where you're mouthing off at somebody else. It's going to be yeah. the video where you're talking down to somebody <clears throat> who was insulting you. And that's what they're going to see. And so, and this isn't just for them. This is for everybody. I tell all my clients, keep your head down. Try and stay off of social media. If your job involves social media, then do it, but keep it as positive as you possibly can. Comment on other people's streams, but don't comment on your own because you don't want that coming up in a Google search later. Wow. Wow. Listen, um, I cannot thank you enough for, for, for this um, lesson. I, I'm looking forward to speak to you further on the Ivani situation. Um, I'm, I'm really rooting for her. Hopefully she will get some assistance. And I'm not sure if you can take on the matter of you can advise how, you know, how it's supposed to be done or going forward or, or attorneys can move forward. But um, I'm hoping for the best for her. So thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to speaking to you again. No problem. And my apologies about the camera. I don't know. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. And, 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 and just, just, just for people who are interested in your service, there are so many people in the U.S. that um, have immigration issues. How can they contact you? Um, you know, you know, your name of your company um, or, or your social media um, page or sure. pages. No, I appreciate that. So we're Laird Law. You can find us here on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, Laird Law. Um, I try and do a show about every Thursday where I update people on things on Facebook just involving immigration or just to teach people a little bit about things that I've gotten as questions. 
Um, you can always send me a message if you have a question, send it to me on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, where I'm happy to get back to you with an answer. If you want me to do a full show on something, um, same thing, I'll always schedule that on Facebook based off of questions I get. You can also find us at Laird Law, so that's L-A-I-R-D, L-A-W dot O-R-G. So that's L-A-I-R-D, L-A-W dot O-R-G is the website, which has all our information. Um, the name on Facebook and Instagram is the same thing, L-A-I-R-D, L-A-W. Our phone number is 212-233-2988. That's 212-233-2988. Two nine eight eight, and that number also works on WhatsApp if you're overseas and you just want to send us a message. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it. Those are uh, a right. number of ways to contact yep. us. Come on, thank you so much. Um, looking forward to speaking to you in the near future. All, All right. right, thanks again. Appreciate Bless it. Up. Bless up, my dear. So, people, um, I must. Big up Dr. Love. This is actually a bridging that Dr. Love I always speak to. Um, so there you have it. You know, some good advice for the people who are on social media that are either seeking asylum or trying to get their stay in the United States. Be careful of what you put on social media. You, um, you have seen what happened to Ivani. And as the, um, as the lawyer said, it is not contingent on the person that you committed the terroristic threat against. It is now in the hands, or it can be placed in the hands of the prosecutor. Yeah? Or the, or the DA. So you don't want to be on social media threatening people, um, going to the extreme with certain rhetoric. Um, and that falls in the hands of um, the people or get the attention of people who actually are the ones who will make the decision whether you stay in the United States, in the United States or, you, or you get come or them saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zane? So, Brother Futa, Zane, I think that a good word of advice for you because you don't know you're my brethren, you're my brother for life. Zane? Ugly Dan? You hear that? Not because you may get your legal documents. It does not mean you are, you know, a U.S. citizen where you can be sending threat to people and be creating, you know, a kind of defamation um, against people. All right? <laughs> you, you are still under the moral turpitude act know that look it up all right you see so you have to always be on your best behavior not because you think you get the paper already or you get the green card as long as you don't have that book that citizenship yeah where they may, may just give you a misdemeanor for a terroristic threat on social media yeah you can still go to jail and you can still get deported yeah so pick up on yourself i Barney, you don't know me like you you just you just give me a good energy, Zane, and may I root for you. Hopefully, you know, you will get to come out and get to come see your youth, spend time with your youth, raise up your youth properly. All right, so this is another lesson. Hope you learn from it, Zane. Big up on yourself, people. One love out of here.